Eddie House, kind enough to join us. Eddie, top of the morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. What up, Eddie? Uh, What's happening? Eddie Eddie, tell me this. So the Celtics now two wins away from a title. Now, this is the same team. There's a lot of talk on needing to break up its core earlier this season. Did you ever see this coming? No, I didn't see it coming. Uh, I started covering the team in December, and it was a mess. Guys were in and out of protocol. Uh, guys were injured. They didn't have any chemistry. They were trying to find their identity. And then it's just like something clicked. And it's almost like when Jalen Brown tweeted out, the energy is about to shift. It seems like guys started getting healthy. The team started coming together. They started playing defense. And then they realized one thing. When they share the basketball, it doesn't have to be hero basketball. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown don't have to be the only guys scoring. When they started sharing that ball, and they also had a team meeting. Marcus Smart called them out. It seemed like everything changed. Defensively, they got better. Offensively, got they got better. And man, they've been rocking and rolling since January. You know, Eddie, one of the things. Uh, Eddie. Go ahead, Stephen A. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. No, no, go, go, ahead, go, 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 go ahead, brother. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got it. Um, Eddie, educate us about this. There was a lot of talk at the beginning of the season. We all knew that Jalen Brown was big time. We knew that Jason Tatum was big time. But there was a lot of questions as to whether or not they could coexist and whether or not Boston should strongly consider separating the two. I want to know what your mindset was when you first arrived and you saw them together. And did you think uh, it was legitimate that these two could be separated because it just wasn't working? What was your mindset? What were you seeing? My mindset was you don't want to break them up. They're young. You don't give up on young talent that's that young, right? They're both young. They're both gifted. And the way this league is going is wing-driven guys that can guard multiple positions and they can score three-level scores. They check both of those boxes. I think what you do is you add to them. They Marcus Smart is a great addition. But I think when they went and got Derek White and they got Al Horford, those were the missing pieces, the missing links. Now Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum don't have to dominate the basketball. Moving Marcus Smart to the point guard, he can make plays, but he also could play off the ball. Derek White coming in, being able to run the show. And then Horford, another guy I think is underrated, flies under the radar as far as what he's, his capabilities and what he can do for the team. A guy that can protect the rim, he can knock down an open three, but then also makes all the right reads, can get it off the glass and push the break and make the right passes. I think you just have to put the right pieces around them. I didn't think you should break them up. They're too young, too young and gifted. I mean, what do you get back for that? I don't know what you could really get back for that except some draft picks and potentially find another guy like that when you already have it. So I, I wasn't a, a big fan or wasn't a believer in trying to break that group up. Eddie, I just got to say, first off, man, as a guy that's played basketball for a long time, I got to tell you, man, that short stint I had with you in the Nets, man, you're one of the greatest shooters I've, I've ever seen, dog. So I just want to pay you high live you. here on the show, man. The way Absolutely. you used to slay, oh, my. People forget, Stephen A., you know what I mean, how this dude used to do it. So I just want to give you your kudos on that. But I am curious. Between and he used to, and he brought it in moments, and oh. he brought it in moments that counted too, Jay. It wasn't right. a front runner. When you needed a bucket, Eddie House gave it to you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, no, I yes. wasn't scared. I ain't scared. You ain't never scared. But I, it, it <laughs> didn't look for like a minute, though, in, in game two, when Draymond was being physical, he was being demonstrative. To me, it felt like Boston looked like a young team at that moment, even though they looked like an old team throughout the playoffs, even though we know they're age-wise young, right? But playing young and playing old are two different things. Like, that was the first time I saw them as a young team for a second. I am curious, from your perspective, Eddie, what changed between game two and game three about the way they were going to readdress Draymond Green? I think, you know, this era of basketball, they come from the AAU group where everybody's bros. Like, that's my partner. We all cool. We're, it's everything is cool. I know we're in the NBA Finals, but we're still buddies. You know, I'm not... I don't like back in the day, guys just really didn't like other guys because you didn't have the accessibility to them via social media or, you know, being able to talk to them or going to all these other camps the way or these AAU tournaments that they are now. So I think what they seen was old school physicality, physical basketball. Like, I don't like you. And that's how Draymond came off. And it kind of put them on their heels. And it was similar to the game one. Once the floodgates opened on the Golden State Warriors in game one, the Warriors couldn't close it. And once that physicality and the floodgates opened in game two, it seemed like the Celtics could never regain their composure. I mean, Draymond was into it with a little bit of everybody. It was Tatum. He was in his face. He had his hand all in Grant Williams' neck. He got into it with Marcus Smart for a little bit. We seen what happened with him and Jalen Brown. And then at the very beginning of the game, I think he set the tone. It was 
the first possession, he ties up Al Horford. They go to the floor. They end up getting a shot clock violation. And that right there, to me, I was like, ooh, okay, it's going to be one of these games. Are they, They're going to have to match that physicality and exceed it if they're going to want to win that game too. That's what I thought myself, and they just never could. And, and Drake got Jake, great job by Gray, Draymond by going out there and saying, hey, this is how I have to play the game. I have to muck it up. This is the way I can affect the game because right now offensively, he's not affecting the game. I mean, defensively, he's fouling a lot, but that was the way for him to affect the game for them to get a win, and he did a great job doing that. Eddie, I hear we have Eddie a photo. Eddie House, where are you now? Getting... I'm... I'm in hear... Boston. Okay, I hear we have a photo for you. Why we're working on that, I got a question for you, though. Obviously, you won the championship 2008. Big perk on that squad. I know you work with him now as well. How would that 2008 team fare against this team? Uh, you know what I think we would. You do with me, be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think we would dog. I think I think we would dog them out because we had a team full of killers, like from top to bottom. It was nobody weak. I mean, there would be no answer for KG. We already seen what KG did to Horford back in, when we played before. Paul Pierce and uh, you could cross out Jason Tatum and Paul Pierce, but that's a top 75 player we talked about. You got Ray Allen, another top 75 player you talk about. You had Rondo running the point, Big Perk being big and nasty down low. You had Leon Poe coming in off the bench. You had Posey coming in off the bench. You had myself coming in off the bench. Then you had Tony Allen, another defender coming off the bench. We were one of the best defensive teams if you really want to, you know, keep it solid in NBA history. One of the best in, in the history of the game. And yeah, we would have ran through them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.